Network. Welcome to Conflicted, the podcast exploring the tension Christian entrepreneurs face trying to pursue success in business and sacrifice in service to Christ. I'm your host, Sean Tom Bagahan, and I'm glad to be with you on this journey. Guys, welcome back to Conflicted. Today, I want to talk to you about company culture. Again, they, the audience for Conflicted is primarily Christian entrepreneurs, people who are running a business, who are also believers. But this also applies to maybe you're not running a business and you're leading a company or you're leading an organization or you're maybe in ch- church leadership or some level of leadership to where you have influence over the culture of the organization or the business that you're working with. Culture is so important. Um, especially if you are someone who has influence. In fact, I don't even want to say if you're someone who has influence because by virtue of you being a believer in a particular place, you for sure have influence. You have a sphere of people that you can either be the thermometer or the thermostat. You know, the thermometer basically reads the, uh, the, the temperature of the room and just responds to that, whereas the thermostat actually makes change. And so just try to always think of yourself as the thermostat. So if you're in, coming into a company that has a negative culture, maybe you, you run a company, you started a company that has a negative culture, you can always change it for the better. You could be that thermostat. Um, it's, it, I've seen a couple of companies, especially uh, with those who are either run by believers or, or the, the owner became a believer later on or became more serious about their faith where traditionally the culture was, was not that which honored God. It was maybe vulgar and they're loose with their tongue or maybe they're, uh, you, they don't have strong work ethic or whatever. And then the, the, the owner becomes convicted of certain things and then wants to change and shift the culture. That's a difficult place to be in, but it's very possible. And I've seen it happen. Um, culture change is, is uh, it's not impossible. It's difficult, but it's going to take work, right? It doesn't happen overnight because it didn't take you overnight to get to where you are. Uh, But if you make small positive changes in the right direction, your company culture will change for the better. Now, when I talk about culture, I'm talking about the general vibe, the environment, the types of people that work there, the atmosphere. Uh, Yeah, I think of vibe. If you were to to, to, uh, explain your company as if it were a person, what would the adjectives be to use uh, that describes the person or the the company culture? Um, I just knew when I started my company, I was really going to be intentional about our culture. Uh, I, I did not want to be a corporate, sterile, stuffy environment that was... Um, just results driven, like what are the KPIs, what are the global business objectives and just doing everything that made sense on a spreadsheet and, uh, you know, buttoned up to the T's, you know, like just making everything look perfect. And and because that was just, uh, it was overwhelming. It was sterile. It had no personality. The authenticity in those kinds of environments is is just shot. I don't feel there's an, a, an atmosphere of openness and communication or collaboration. There's the, the 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 facade you have to put on while you're in the building, and then you're another person outside. I just wanted to make sure that when I started my company, that the culture was somewhere where I would want to be. Yeah, I did. If we're gonna spend hours, in fact, most of the hours of our day in a particular place, whether it's at an office or, or even if you're working remotely, but primarily if you're working together in a place, um, I wanted it to be a place where I would want to go, um, not a place where I, f- I dreaded going, right? When people say, oh man, I got to go back to work or case of the Mondays or where it's like, you know what? I don't want to live a life that I need to take a vacation from. You can't, you know, my wife was talking to me about taking a vacation. When was the last time we've taken a real vacation to go, you know, for an extended period of time? I said, look, I, I have a life that I don't necessarily want to take a vacation from. I love what I do. I love the people I work with. And so I wanted to be really intentional about our culture. And so culture, uh, in my opinion, should affect everything. Every decision that you make as a business uh, should be influenced by who you are as an organization, what is the company culture? And a lot of times as, as leaders, the company culture is just a reflection of you. Um, you could state that our culture is a particular way, but if in actuality the leadership operates 
according to a different MO, the culture is not going to be what you say it is. Uh, like Enron you know, or all these other companies that have had um, these crazy scandals, they have core values that sound amazing, but are they actually living up to those core values? And so um, culture literally should affect every aspect. It should affect who you hire, how you fire. It should affect the, the dealings uh, in the workplace, how you guys um, talk to one another, how you answer the phones, how you respond to emails, your ethic of work. All of that is determined by your company culture. And so the question is then, how do you define your company culture? Uh, one of the things that I think is helpful in defining your company culture is defining your core values. And again, a lot of this is gonna stem from the leadership. If you're the CEO, if you're, you're the operations manager or whoever you are, if you have a level of executive leadership in the company, um, you have to identify what values we hold to that are unwavering. These are the things that like, we're, we may not operate in all of these things perfectly, but th these are who we, this, these values are who we are to the core, their core values. And so once you determine your core values, then that basically describes what you're going to look like as a culture. Another thing that has helped us uh, at Butler, Butler's my company, um, is, is the, um, the row system, the results only work environment. I, in, in particular, uh, I'm, I'm a bad micromanager, meaning like I'm not good at telling you what to do and then telling you how to do it and then following up and making sure you're doing everything right and then making sure you're following all the guidelines. Like I, I'm not that kind of manager. I'm like, here's the vision. Here's what needs to be done. Here's the timeline. You figure it out. You're a big boy. You're a big girl. You could figure it out. And so the results only work environment when we incorporated that into our uh, company it really changed a lot of things. Uh, ba the basic premise, and I'm not going to go into depths of what a row is. Maybe we could do a whole uh, podcast on that. But it's um, the the time clock is not the indicator of how and when work gets done. For example, we are less interested in how many hours are clocked on the the timesheet than we are the actual work getting done. Hence, results only work environment. So we don't care if you come into the office. You could have unlimited paid time off as far as I'm concerned, so long as the work gets done. And so that gives a level of responsibility and leadership upon each individual to figure out when and where and how they work best. We provide all the tools, all the training, all the opportunity for collaboration to make sure that your, your job gets done, but it's on you to make sure the work gets done. And for some people that might be better at a coffee shop at three in the afternoon. For some people it might be from their home at midnight and they work until 3 a.m. and they do other things during the day. I really don't care. You're a grown person and you can figure out your own work schedule. And so that type of uh, work environment has actually seeped into our culture and it's provided a level of accountability between all of our employees to where it's like, well, we didn't get that done before five o'clock. So, you know, we'll just have to, it's like, no, 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 the deadlines are these dates. And so everybody has a level of ownership and responsibility. And so that bleeds into our culture. But going back to, um, to core values, I feel like the core values is really what sets the tone and the temperature for the company. And so I'll, I'll, I'll read you the, the core values that we have at Butler. At Butler, we've identified 10 core values. And every month I read these to my staff, I become redundant. It's just like a broken record because I always want to continue to remind ourselves uh, the values that determine who we are. And so I, I always start by, with this statement. It says, by core values, we mean the values that are at the center of everything we do. Having clearly defined core values helps us to determine if we're on the right path and fulfilling our business goals. These values are the unwavering, unchanging guides by which we filter all our decision-making and goal-setting efforts. They're the attitudes and the mindsets that we strive for. Understanding that if we fall short, at least we're falling forward in the direction of attaining these values. In other words, we're always not going to live up to these and we recognize that, but at least we're falling forward in this direction. We treat them as resolutions. The first core value is nurturing creativity. We resolve to continually feed our creative superpowers and learn new concepts. Though our nature may be closed off to that which is new, we are determined to be 
open-minded and explore new things. So nurturing creativity, again, we're a creative agency. We're a marketing and branding agency. So this really is critical to our team is to be uh, operating as creatives, but always to feed our creative superpowers. Second one, finding and bridging gaps. We resolve to always look for ways to make things work or work better. As creative people, we have the ability to think outside the box, finding solutions to complex problems. This is why people love us. We will figure it out. And so that's a huge piece is just the freedom to figure it out. People need to know in, in my company, they need to know that they do have the freedom to figure things out. I'm not the one that's gonna tell you what to do and how to do it. Uh, you have Google, you could do your research, you have people that you could connect to, but you will figure it out. And so when we talk about finding and bridging gaps, it's it, it, what are the challenges? And I'm not gonna just come up with the challenges, I'm gonna find ways to actually make this work. And so we always try to remind ourselves that, look, you could figure it out. Uh, this is your responsibility. You're given this task. You're given this project. You don't know how to do it. You could figure it out. If you need help figuring it out, let's try to help you figure it out together. Um, but this is only after you've tried to figure it out at least two, three times on your own. You're, you're running into a brick wall. Um, dream big and work hard. We resolve to never stagnate, though we're always grateful. As driven people, we will dream big and work harder than we think is necessary to achieve our goals. Um, and so, yeah, th this is, again, even as being a, a Christian entrepreneur, I'm trying to run that, walk that tightrope of contentment without complacency, right? I, I want to always recognize that I'm doing better than I deserve, that I have more than I could, than, than I've uh, earned on my own, that uh, God has been so gracious to us. But at the same time, I'm not going to stagnate. Uh, I'm content with where God has given me. Uh, where I am and, and uh, what God has given me and where I am in life, but I'm always pressing forward to have more of what God would have for us. And so dream big, but we're always going to also work hard because we recognize that it's not kind of going to come just because we really want it. Uh, we reject the three C's. I got this from, I believe, Dale Carnegie in um, How to Win Friends and Influence People, but I just thought it was a good thing to steal and add them to our core value. Uh, which is we resolve to not criticize, condemn, or complain. We're committed to cultivating an environment of encouragement, support, and gratitude. And so I hate complaining. I do complain sometimes, and, and I just hate that about myself. And so I expect people to call me on it. Are you complaining? Are you criticizing? Are you condemning? We want to make sure that people feel open, that they feel encouraged, uh, that it's an environment where they feel supported, uh, and that we're grateful for one another. So we're not going to criticize one another. We're not going to condemn or complain. Radical service. We resolve to go above and beyond that which was expected or agreed upon to make our clients happy. We will wow our clients with phenomenal service because we understand it's better to give than to receive. The best way to lead is to serve and the best form of marketing is a job well done. So I'm very fortunate in Butler to have most of our business coming through referral marketing, people telling other people or just our name is out there and we've developed a good reputation for ourselves in the community. And the reason why that is, is because when people come to us, they feel served. I want to make sure that we, we don't over promise and under deliver, but we uh, over promise and over deliver. And so we deliver upon our promises and we go above and beyond uh, that, which we, uh, w which they even expected to receive. And so we want to look for ways intentionally that we could radically serve our clients. And, and I want to reward my staff for doing that. When, when clients come and they, they say, Hey, thank you so much because this staff member did this. And it was just well above their, um, their, their expected job duties. Have fun. Uh, so yeah, we, we resolve to make the workplace a fun, exciting, energetic, and inviting place to be. Though we're professional, driven, and we work hard, we don't take ourselves too seriously. Again, this goes back to when I first started the company. I wanted to make sure that it wasn't that sterile, stuffy corporate. Like We wanted to have fun. And so be yourself. Let your hair down. We intentionally do things that promote a fun workplace. Um, and, and I love it. My staff, uh, I believe, loves coming to the office. And uh, we like working together. Um, again, if we're going to spend that much time with one another, it might as well be with people that we enjoy. And so making that experience pleasurable. Drive change. We resolve to not only embrace change, but to actively seek ways of driving change in order to improve, evolve, adjust, and stay ahead of the curve. We're uncomfortable with comfort and we will never make the excuse, but we've always done it this way. Again, keeping this core value at the forefront of our thinking every month 
uh, it just gets us out of that that mindset that says, well, we've always done it this way and that way must be good because we've always done it that way. It's like, no, you know what? I come with the assumption that everything we do is probably not as good as it possibly can be. So how are we going to make things better? How are we going to drive change? How, how can we change things? What needs to be changed? Identifying those areas and then not just embracing that things are changing, but literally driving change. How do we put ourselves out of business before our competition does? Openly communicate. We resolve to over-communicate to our team and to our clients. We will not beat around the bush, backbite, gossip, or leave any room for miscommunication. We work best in collaboration and strive to keep the lines of communication open. This one is really huge for me. I, I hate awkwardness between people. I know a lot of people are, are passive aggressive or people want to um, avoid confrontation or conflict. Uh, for whatever insecure reasons we might have, for me, I prefer to avoid awkwardness. And so if there's a, a particular way that someone's feeling about me, or if I'm feeling a, a certain way about somebody, I'd rather get that out in the open. Even if I don't have the best words to, like, look, like I, I might not have the best way to, to soften this up to where it's going to be received you know, uh, the best way, but here's just what I'm thinking. Here's what I'm feeling. Like let's openly communicate. So there's no room for guesswork. I don't want to beat around the bush. I don't want to be passive aggressive. Let's just get everything out in the open, clear from the get go. And so overly communicate. I try to exercise that with my team. I get that it can come across as abrasive or stoic or emotionless. It's just that's how I'm bent and I prefer people be like that with me so I don't have to guess what they're thinking, that we could just be open and honest with one another, giving each other the benefit of the doubt that uh, they're, they're not coming to me with this concern because they hate me, but it's because we care about this relationship, we care about this mission that we're, we're trying to, uh, to accomplish and there's something getting in the way there. So open communication is huge. Be humble and gracious. We resolve to work with humility, preferring others above ourselves and extending grace to those who need it, just as we eventually will. We will always find ways to make it work or make it right. We don't think more highly of ourselves than we ought to. So uh, humility and graciousness, this not only comes across um, interrelationally with our staff, but also in our dealings with our clients. There's been times to where Things go wrong. If you're in business, things are gonna happen. Issues are gonna happen. And so you have two choices. You can either make it work or you can or you can make it right. And so, or you could just not make it work and, and that's what gives you a bad uh, reputation. And so for us, it's like, we're gonna make this thing work. And if it doesn't work, how can I make this right? And there's been situations to where I feel like it was even probably the client's fault, but what am I gonna do? Am I gonna argue with them back and forth about how I'm uh, the, the right one in this situation? Or am I just gonna eat it and, and invest in the relationship by maybe taking a loss in the short term? And there's been certain times where I've taken short, time, short term losses for long term gains because my clients trust me. They know that they could come to us um, with issues that they don't have to beat around the bush, that, that we're gonna be humble, we're gonna be gracious about it. We're going to own up to our mistakes. Um, and if there, if a mistake is made, I want to make sure that I'm honest, I'm humble about it, but also it's expected that if somebody else makes a mistake, I'm going to be gracious towards them because I'm not perfect. And I want to make room for us to make errors and make mistakes because they, they do happen. So how can we grow? How can we learn? Um, in every single one of our staff members, they've messed up and they've, they've been shown grace. And there's also times that I've messed up and everybody knows just because I'm at the top, I'm not perfect. Uh, they, they all know that. I know that. And so there, because I, uh, I believe that I've cultivated this environment where it's like, look, if you messed up, you just take it be humble, admit your faults, they're gonna extend grace to you and guess what? That's gonna be reciprocated back to them. Give back. We resolve to show our gratitude by giving back to others intentionally as often and as often as we can. We understand that when it comes to serving others, you either go into the well yourself or you hold the rope for those who do. So we commit to hold the rope for organizations that are committed to serving the needs of the world. I got that quote from Paul Washer a long time ago. He says, you either go down into the well yourself or you hold the rope for those who do. I believe that it's my responsibility that uh, to whom much is given, much is required. We have the responsibility to 
to, to bless those who are going into actually doing serious work that is affecting the world. And for me, it's, it's world missions, it's community outreach. And so we partner with different organizations, nonprofits, community-based organizations, and we intentionally think of ways that we can either um, volunteer, sponsor, support these organizations through Butler's efforts. And we've donated tons of services, uh, whether it's for free or drastically reduced rates just because they're causes that we believe in and we want to to uh, help promote what they're doing and so we always want to think of different ways we could give back and so those are the 10 core values and it seems like a lot right and uh, j just again to restate it's nurturing creativity finding and bridging gaps dream big working hard rejecting the three c's radically serving having fun driving change open and honest communication humility and graciousness and giving back those are the core values, the, the unwavering uh, tenets that we hold to, the, the filter through which we make all of our decisions. And I remind me and the team of those every single month. And so that's how we keep those core values front and center. I did some, some coaching with an agency owner uh, recently and he didn't have cultural issues. He had pretty strong culture, but they weren't defined and he wanted to scale. He was in, he's on the precipice of growing. And so, um, you know, it's easy to have a strong company culture if there's like three or four of you. What if there's 10 of you? What if there's a hundred? What if there's 200? What if there's a thousand? How do you permeate your culture uh, through, throughout the company as you start to grow. And that's where having an intentional cultural plan together, that's, that helps. And so I'm, uh, I'm going to give you listener viewer, the same challenge that I gave this gentleman that I was coaching is to put together a culture plan. And this is answering these six questions. What meetings will you have and how often as a team, what will the format of those meetings be? How will you incorporate leadership development, like developing the leaders from within your team? How, what are your uh, core values that you will define? What practical things will you do regularly to deepen culture and how frequent? And how will culture affect your hiring and firing processes? So those are some of the questions that you might wanna ask yourself if you want to put together a cultural plan. Again, starting with the, those core values, figuring out a way to keep those front and center, think about the different group activities and the format and the frequency and put those together and that will help you develop a, a more intentional cultural plan. Thanks for sticking around. If you liked this episode, please do me a favor and subscribe, share the podcast with others and write a review. It only takes a second and it helps get the word out to more people. Also, if you want to support the podcast financially, please visit my Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash Sean Tamba. That's patreon.com forward slash S-E-A-N-T-A-M-B-A. Any amount definitely helps. You can also see the link in the show notes. That's it for today, folks. Thank you and God bless.